PagerDuty is a real-time platform for action. And we consume signals and information from every tech stack, every device in an organization, and we help IT and teams and developers uh, identify, triage, and resolve issues and incidents before they impact the consumer experience. Every company on the planet is digitizing. The brand experience has become a digital experience, and as a result, um, consumers are becoming really impatient. You know, they used to give you six minutes to uh, load an app or deliver a delightful experience, and now it's six seconds or less. And so when something goes wrong, the consumer quits. And what PagerDuty enables IT and developer teams to do is not only react very quickly and effectively to potential disruptions caused by an increasingly complex technology environment, but also predict and prevent incidents from happening before they cause a business impact. So we're sort of the um, eyes and ears. Oh yes, go ahead. No, I just wanted to ask, drilling down on that, you, you I, I guess, have insight into what types of features customers are demanding, uses for big data uh, and, and real-time information that are coming to the fore. What do you see emerging as the type of data that customers need to have in hand most quickly now? I think um, behavioral information, how uh, teams respond, the operational health of the technology environment inside of business, so which services and applications work well and which ones don't, what's costing you money, what's driving revenue, what isn't, uh, and likewise, which workflows, like how do certain teams operate more productively than other teams? Uh, these are really important data points, and you can only understand this in real time, in a micro moment or a second, the moment of truth when you need to get it right for the consumer. If you are collecting data uh, on uh, hundreds and thousands of people, the workflows that they use, and the millions of uh, events and incidents that uh, transact on any given day in a business. Jennifer, I would imagine, and we're just looking at the list of some of your customers, I would imagine cybersecurity is a big part of that. It's certainly been getting a lot more attention. A number of folks down in D.C., for example, this week talking about the need to continue beefing up cybersecurity. How do you keep those customers' data and information safe? That's a really great question, and it's super important to us. We've built a highly resilient, secure, and reliable platform that transacts more uh, technology events and incidents and information than any other platform in the market. And it is our job to make sure that our customers' data is secure, uh, that their workflows are secure, and that we also help them detect anomalies or issues that may be the early indicators of a potential security issue. And it's something that um, is not static. You're having to constantly pay attention to what's going on in the cyberspace, in the cyber market. And it's a challenge for every single company um, uh, in, the, in the world right now, whether you're a small startup uh, just getting up and running or you know, you're a large organization like Estee Lauder. Mm. Jennifer, before we let you go, I just I want to get your thoughts on a conversation we've been having here increasingly as more and more companies look to do things like uh, gender parity. About 50% of your company's engineering leadership is female. Uh, and 50% of the company's leadership team in general is female. Is that something that was coincidental or did you actually set out to do that? No, that was, there was nothing coincidental about that. We set a goal uh, early in my tenure with the company to really set the example of how an inclusive and diverse workforce could deliver you know, better than average performance and outstanding outcomes. And we've had to make a lot of operational changes, including ensuring that half of every candidate slate is diverse as opposed to just one person. Uh, making sure that every job in our business, job for job, is paid equally. Uh, and that starts with a lot of research and assessment, but ongoing maintenance. And ensuring that there are senior leaders uh, from all different diverse backgrounds and ethnicities and genders that set an example and create a great culture for people to work in. It sometimes means that uh, recruiting takes longer. It means you have to look in less conventional places. And you also have to build a culture that is inviting to people of different backgrounds. So we are unique. There are not very many female CEOs in the cloud computing industry. And there, there are not a lot of gender balanced teams in the industry. But we want to reflect our customer base and reflect the future of the tech industry, not the past.